this AI agent is able to access all my email inbox and respond to people with my own writing styles. And it can even review GitHub PR on my behalf. If you are also a big fan of TV show Silicon Valley, you might remember this thing. So Dinesh thinks this is you? Correct. He's been messaging with it all day and he has no idea it's an AI. What the fuck is going on? Cause I just texted you and you were, um, we've been texting back and forth all day. Was that not you? Complicated question. Is your shadow you? Was that a bot? Yes. So I spent all day chatting with a bot? Yes. You made an AI Guilfoyle? Yes. And I was talking to it. Do you need the real me for this conversation? <laughs> you can't just fuck with people and manipulate. Them because you don't have the decency to want to interact with a coworker. So the concept of having AI shadowing you and talk to your colleague and friends is actually possible now. AI agent has been the hottest topic this year. It has developed so much past few months from baby AGI, auto GPT, agent GPT, and small AI. What is agent? Fundamentally, agent is basically a combination of large language model plus memory plus planning skills plus tools. So that large language model can actually prioritize tasks that it needs to be done, use the right tools to execute those tasks, and then decide what's the next best action to take with all the information collected. However, at the moment, all those AI agents still feels like baby steps. It has really high error rate in terms of the task to execute. And also the tools it can use is quite limited. Most of them are just browsing the internet. However, this one AI platform that really opens up the imagination of what an AI agent for personal assistant could look like. So this new AI agent I want to talk about today is called HyperWrite. It is Chrome plugin that already got more than 100K users. It is initially an AI writing companion like Jasper, but what they just introduced is a new feature called AI Assistant. It is basically a auto GPT that has access to your whole browser. So you can ask it to book a flight, which would go to website and book a ticket. Also have access to DOM nodes or LinkedIn and do things that just like you would do. So the tool selection has been expanded massively. And this tool currently is in alpha 0.01, but it's already really impressive results once you test it out. To use this AI assistant, you can go to Google Chrome plugin, which I have a link below and install this plugin. And once it's finished, you can go to a website that you wanted to do task on. And there, and there's a few use case I want to share that really open up my imaginations. The first use case is emails. And as you can see, I'm pretty terrible at managing my inbox. I can actually ask it to read and respond to all my unread emails. So to use that, once you are in Gmail, you should see a little icon here. And once you hover it, it will give you a list of options. So we will click on this personal assistant. So what I wanted to do is respond to all my unread emails. So I will type in here, respond to all my emails and click start action. Once you click on that, you will see a new window pop up and on the right side, it is showing it is working. Okay. You can see the agent is thinking the current page is Gmail inbox and there are several unread email and it actually opened one of the unread email I have and start scroll down to this respond bar, click on respond and type in a respond and actually send out email on behalf of me. And then it go back to the inbox page, try to find the next unread email. And if you look at the syncing of from agents, it is able to tell like one email is from Google photo. It is automated email. So it didn't require any response. At the moment, there's still some arrows. Like it will open the same email multiple times before it move on to the next one. But as the accuracy improved, I can imagine this became super useful. And I wonder whether I can push this even further. I will ask it to read all my unread emails. And if it is personal email, write a response. Otherwise, archive it. And let me start this action. So as you can see, it is able to tell both the Amazon email and the other one are promotional and you just start archiving it automatically. It is already doing a great job reviewing and archive five to six different emails for me. It's not that useful for this uh, email because 99% of them is promotional, but if it is business email, it can draft a response and flag the important message for you to review later. And what's really cool about this is it is actually able to read all your Gmail data so it can start learning your writing styles. So the next use case I want to share is leads generation in LinkedIn. 
one lead generation strategy I know people do is they will try to find posts from potential customers and comment under their posts to warm up the connection. So when they reach out, the customer already have some impression or connection with this person. And I think that's one use case that this personal assistant can potentially do. What I will do is I will give it a task, find a list of posts about generative AI, and then leave a comment to each post. And let's get it running. So it, first they start searching generative AI in LinkedIn. And then it switch to the post tab so it can find all the posts. And they open up the comment box automatically and wrote a comment based on the content on behalf of me. <laughs> oh shit, it actually posted the comment as well. So I'm going to stop it before I spam a lot of people on LinkedIn. But you can see how this playing out and you can basically search for uh, a lot of different posts and uh, filter the high quality one and comment below. And the other use case I want to share is getting this AI agent to review pull requests for me. If you don't know what a pull request is, uh, it's basically if two people or a team working on the same code base, they will need to review each other's work before it merge together. And it's pretty tedious process that I will need to go to each pull request, look at the file change, making sure there's no errors. And if there is all good, I will click on merge. If it's not, I will write a comment and uh, give feedback to them. And what I did here is I actually made a typo on purpose for one PR I'm submitting. So I will remove the E from the message, which created a typo here. And I just create a pull request for this change. I'm pretty curious to see whether uh, AI agent can actually do this pull request for me. Okay. So I will give you an instruction here. Help me review the PR, approve if of good, leave a comment if it needs improvements and start it. Okay, so it successfully go to the pull request page as it knows PR represents for pull requests. And then it opens a PR that ready for review. Let's say whether it's able to go to file change or commit page to compare the changes. Okay, great. So it does go to files change and let's see if it's able to spot the arrow. Oh, cool. So it actually automatically left a comments here. It seems there's a typo in the variable name and it click on the star review. So now it successfully completes this task and the author will get a notification that says here's a comment. This is really impressive and this seems to be a task that this AI agent is really good at and has pretty high success rate. All right. And the next use case I want to test out is let this AI agent to write blog posts for me and automatically publish it because it has access to my Webflow account. And this is my personal website. So I'll go to the blog post page to make sure there's less room for arrow. And I will open this personal assistant, give instruction, write and publish a blog post about problems of generative AI. At least 200 words and fill in with both excerpt and body. Let's try. All right, so you can see that Successfully create a new blog post page and it fill in the title, it fill in the uh, description here, and then start writing the actual blog post body. So the blog post here is still pretty short. Uh, and I guess that's because of instruction I give it is 200 words. If I give more, it probably will input more stuff there as well. Once it published blog post, it go back to the homepage of Webflow and then looking for the publish button. Okay, great. <laughs> So it successfully published the blog post. And what's more impressive is it actually visits my website and try to click on that blog post page to kind of to validate if the task actually completed. This is a step that I didn't expect. The validation step is actually really cool. All right, so this is really impressive. I don't think I will use this for actual quality blog posts. What this will be really good is writing tweets. I'm pretty curious to see whether I can use this to write tweets every three hours about quotes from famous people. So those are the use cases that are really eye-opening for me. Uh, but there are also a lot of stuff that this AI agent is not great at. For example, I asked it to find latest news about generative AI projects and create a blog post in the Google Doc. And what I found is it can actually successfully uh, do the research, find the relevant news, but it's not great at using Google Docs. So you can see it was successfully putting in the title of Google Doc, but it's unable to find where should I type the body of content. And the same case for Google Sheet and a few other platforms too. However, I'm still super excited about this because as it improves the quality of task execution, the use case of personal assistant can start opening up. And in the end, I also want to share a mental model about agents that Swix shared. 
So in a launching agent webinar, Swix mentioned about this mental model. Currently, when we talk about building agents, a lot of people are trying to build level five fully autonomous self-driving cars. But not enough people are actually focusing on level two or level three agents where the AI doing some specific tasks extremely well and let human to steer the direction or instruct the next steps. And I think this is really brilliant because when I think about the, all those agents products we tried, in general, it fell into two parts. One is a planning of the tasks. Quite often, large language model is still not great in terms of deciding what's the best next step to do. Second is the quality of task execution because it's tried to get GPT to do a lot of stuff, but the quality of task execution is not great. So I personally very excited to see what are kind of level two and level three agents people start building. For example, I can say a word where the agent is specialized in certain tasks, like try to find good information from internet exhaustively. And human will decide what kind of next topic it should try to research further without spending hours and hours scrapping the internet. And I think more specialized agents like this being built will eventually allow us to move towards a level five type of fully autonomous agents. So this is today's video and I definitely highly recommend you try out this AI assistant and see what kind of interesting use case it's capable to do. And I will post a few videos in terms of exploring what type of interesting and practical agents we can build. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe and like, and I see you next time.